I'm gonna try meth just once. I'm gonna smoke this just once. I'm gonna steal just once. I'm going to sleep with him for meth just once. I'm going to try meth just once. The Heartland Meth Project. Meth Rots is a community impact project of the Heartland United Way. The Heartland United Way feels strongly that meth has a terrible hold on our communities and wants to see what kind of changes can be made if people come together to openly discuss and look for ways to reduce the use of drugs, especially methamphetamine. The video will take a look at a local man whose life was destroyed by meth. And along with this story, this video will provide information about resources available in central Nebraska to help with prevention education, information, and treatment about how you can get more involved in substance abuse prevention. This program is not meant to give you all the information out there, but it's a start. We encourage you to get involved and learn more. What is methamphetamine? It is a synthetic drug, meaning it's manufactured and is highly psychologically and physically addictive. It is a stimulant drug that has been around for about a century and was initially used to help people lose weight. The danger surrounding meth is that it cooks your organs and your brain, but meth just doesn't destroy the user. Meth destroys families, communities, jobs, and the environment. Meth consumes your life, and soon after your first use, nothing else seems to matter except meth. Law enforcement have apprehended a suspect near Capitol Avenue and St. Paul Road in Grand Island. An ambulance has been called to the scene. The Nebraska State Patrol and Grand Island Police have been in pursuit of the suspect since early Monday afternoon, after he rammed two law enforcement vehicles and fled on foot. During the incident, shots were fired and one state trooper received a gunshot wound to the leg. The injured trooper has since been transported from the scene. The suspect is believed to have had special forces and military training. Sean Westfall had his encounter with police back on April 2nd of 2007, and that was possibly the best thing that could have happened to Sean, says his mother, Lori. When I, when I make a statement that it's okay um, for, for my son to be in jail, I, unless you've been through that, people just can't even understand that. But with as painful as it is to, to, to know what is ahead of him, because he will be doing some some time in prison, um, I still look at it and I think it will never be as bad as it was before April 2nd. What put this man behind bars was a run-in with police, but what really did him in is what many are calling the world's most dangerous drug, methamphetamine. In order to understand how addictive this drug really is, you need to take a look at the Wheel of Addictions. This wheel represents many different drugs or categories of drugs, all of which can be addictive. Many times people become addicted to more than one drug or move from one drug to another drug. Each has its own intoxicating effects, creating different problems in users and addicts, many times spinning out of control. Again, this causes problems not only for the addict, but for those around them too. In the field of addictions, many consider tobacco, alcohol, and marijuana to be gateway drugs. Sean admittedly believes marijuana to be the gateway drug that led to his use of meth. Marijuana is real easy to get, and it, I, solely, I really solely believe that marijuana is the gateway drug. Not only are you first introduced to using a drug, uh, an illegal drug, but you're, you're introduced to the underground criminal black market. You know, where do you go to get marijuana? The drug dealer's house. And what do you find at the drug dealer's house? You find drugs. You know, it's real easy for him to say, I'm fresh out of marijuana, but have you ever tried this? Sean describes how easy it was for him to get his hands on drugs. Uh, it's real easy, actually. My buddy actually introduced me to uh, the pipe, which is, you know, he had a you know, vague uh, gist of what was going on in my life at that time. So, I um, mean, it's just a perfect example of Misery Loves Company. Sean appeared to be off to a great career after his time in Bosnia in the military. He was home for a few months while he waited for a job in Baghdad where he would have been making an annual salary of $280,000. But Sean decided he wanted to have some marijuana. He had tried marijuana before and he turned to the same friend 
who had supplied him with marijuana in the past, and this was when Sean was offered the drug that would change his life forever, meth. I'd lived my life 28 and a half years of my life, uh, you know, doing everything that I'd ever dreamed of doing. I had set goals, I had everything. And within a six month period of trying that drug, it completely flipped the way I was, completely changed who I was. Meth is three and a half to four times more addictive than cocaine. You may say nothing is that addictive, but take this into consideration. Imagine your favorite food. When you eat your favorite food, you get this good feeling. That feeling is your dopamine level in your brain that allows you to have good feelings. When you eat something that tastes good, your dopamine level is around 150. The levels in your brain look something like this. This is dopamine moving at a normal pace, but when you're high on meth, your levels will look something like this. Your dopamine level when high on meth is around 1250. Compare that with cocaine where your dopamine level is around 350. The other difference between the two drugs is the rush or high you get with cocaine usually only lasts an hour. With just one hit of meth, you can stay high for up to 12 hours. The danger of this high is that your body begins to build a tolerance level to the drug, and this is where the drug really begins to affect your life. Honestly, I didn't think that there was anything wrong with my personality. I thought that everyone that was close to me, around me, that everyone was overreacting to everything that I was doing. You know, it was like I couldn't understand why they, everyone just started acting crazy. Uh, the conscious thought, you know, of, of it was actually me alienating myself from the majority and not the other. You know, it was like someone flipped a light switch off in my head and said, now go ahead and try to think in the dark. Because your body has begun to build a tolerance to the drug, you need more and more just to reach the same high you had when you first took the drug. You begin to spend more money on the drug. Because of this, your life begins to fall apart from the inside out. Your dopamine sensors in your body become damaged beyond repair and you become numb. You literally begin to cook your organs because of some of the chemicals that are used to cook meth. Some of those chemicals include ephedrine, like in common cold medicine, lye, drain cleaner, battery acid, and antifreeze. Imagine putting these chemicals into your system. One person who is feeling the ill effects of this drug is Heather Morgan Barnes. Heather Morgan was a meth addict and has been clean for over a year. And it still, I mean, it still affects me today, like I said, under here with that little thing. I have to wear this heart monitor right now because I, uh, my health isn't all that great still. It affected me pretty bad for long-term effects of it. Long-term effects of meth is that it can change who you are and what you look like. Take, for instance, this lady. She used meth for 10 years, and you can see the effects it had on her face. And by the way, the final picture with her eyes closed is of her in her coffin at age 42. Another long-term effect that is apparent with many addicts is sores all over their bodies. These sores come from picking at their skin, which creates the open sores. Meth sends you down a road through the likes you have never seen before. Addicts become paranoid and begin believing that there are bugs crawling on them. But when they pick, all they get is skin. They keep picking and the sores just get deeper and deeper. Another long-term effect of meth is addicts losing their teeth, which is often referred to as meth mouth. This happens for a few reasons. Meth impedes the flow of saliva because many addicts don't drink enough fluids. They don't brush their teeth because they keep chasing that euphoric high and they begin spending all of their money on meth. Remember though, there are meth addicts out there that don't have the obvious physical scars. These are the things that happen to your body, but everything and everyone is affected by this drug. In Nebraska alone, nearly two out of every five children who were placed in foster care are there because of meth use. Researchers found that a meth user can cost an employer an average of $47,500 in lost productivity and health care costs. Additionally, drug-exposed children cost the society millions of dollars each year. Although meth is arguably the world's most addictive drug, some are able to walk away and many do get clean. The success rate for meth addicts is similar to other hard drugs. Many addicts do relapse, but the more times we get them into treatment increases their chances for long-term recovery. There are no quick fixes when it comes to this drug. There are many places someone can go to seek help, and to name a few, they are St. Francis Medical Center's Alcohol and Drug Treatment Center, Mid Plain Center, and the Central Nebraska Council on Alcoholism and Addictions, just to name a few. The best way to fight against this widespread drug is the education and understanding of what this drug can do to you. 
someone you love, or even your community. Things to look out for would be if you have a suspicion that someone around you is using, whether it be someone in your house or in your neighborhood, is a strong smell that may resemble urine, chemical smells like ammonia or acetone, missing light bulbs, foil in the trash, extra efforts to cover windows and reinforce doors, or just if it seems like a home has an unusual amount of traffic for the neighborhood. There are many other attention getters when it comes to recognizing meth use, and that is why it is so important for you to become knowledgeable and understand the dangers of meth, just so you can be ready in case you are confronted with the decision that involves the world's most dangerous drug, methamphetamine. You know, it's, it's been my experience uh, using meth and being around other meth users that, you know, everyone has a story and not anyone's story is any better or any worse than the other one. You know, whatever your problems are, seek help. You know, whether it be a family member, a friend, or even a counselor, there's no shame in that. The only shame is in throwing your life away and hurting the lives of the ones that are around you. You're not gonna find any loyalty, you're not gonna find any friendships, any true friendships, or any true meaning using this drug. All you're gonna find is a rotting, and it's gonna rot you mentally and physically. You know, learn from my mistakes. Please learn from my mistakes. Uh, the high is just not worth throwing your life away.